So the first dynamic is the emergence, the rise of GPU computing. The second thing that happened started, happened uh, several years ago. And in fact, some would call this the second era, not of, not of processing, but the second era of computing altogether. As you know, when you guys are doing a search on Google, um, somehow it magically knows uh, what kind of information you're interested in. Uh, when you're doing, uh, watching movies on Netflix, somehow it magically knows what, it, what are other movies that you would enjoy. And when you're shopping on Amazon, it's amazing that every single page is personalized for you. And that it knows, based on the type of shopping habits that you have, there are other things that you might be interested in. None of those programs were written as a sequence of instructions specifically by engineers. All of that was made possible by machine learning. It's learning from all of your behavior and all your interactions with, with that service, and over time, it becomes more and more predictive. It is almost able to anticipate your needs. Machine learning is one of the most important computer revolutions ever. Whereas computer scientists used to specify every single instruction a line at a time, now algorithms write algorithms. Software writes software. Computers are learning by themselves. Machine learning, the era of machine learning. Pedro Domingos, the University of Washington professor, uh, wrote a really elegant book, and it's called The Master Algorithm. And he describes that there are five tribes in machine learning. The symbolists, people who use inverse deduction, induction. The Bayesians, probabilistic in, in, uh, inference. The an analogizers, the evolutionists, the ones that believe in genetic programming. These, five, these four approaches are also making enormous contributions in computer science. But one particular tribe called the connectionists have recently burst it into the public consciousness. This particular approach, which is now called deep learning, is the culmination of research breakthroughs from so many different labs, from Schmidt Huber's Swiss AI lab on using GPUs for convolution neural nets and the early uses of LSTM, long short-term memory, um, recurrent neural nets, to Jan LeCun's work with CNNs, to the groundbreaking work invention of back propagation, prop back propagation by Jeff Hinton at the University of Toronto, the work that Fei Fei has done on ImageNet and computer vision at Stanford, and of course, uh, quite famous work by Andrew Eng on deep learning at Stanford as well. All of their works have come together into, if you will, kind of called the Big Bang of deep learning, the Big Bang of modern AI. And um, Feifei gave a talk recently where she uh, was talking about the search for intelligence. And she said that the Big Bang of AI, what made it possible were three fundamental ingredients. The breakthrough of deep learning was made possible by three things. Of course, the culmination of all of those great ideas that came together into the deep learning algorithm and the deep learning approach. The second is the availability of an enormous amount of data. And third is the discovery of using GPUs to accelerate deep learning, the training of deep learning, the development of the network, the model. Well, that combination set off in 2012 one of the most amazing progress in computer science. That culmination, that Big Bang, allows computers to magically look at an image, determine what's the important features, learn the features hierarchically, from pixels to curves to objects, for example, my face, my ear, my nose, my eyes, to eventually turn it into a face, and my face that it learned it hierarchically and was able to represent knowledge, represent information in this way by extracting it out of raw data all by itself. 
It is able to look at a picture of me and recognize that it is me. It is not only robust, it is diverse. It could recognize me in the sun, in the dark, with a hat on, half of my face occluded in shadow, maybe slightly turned away. It could recognize other people. It can generalize. The ability for these networks to not only be robust and diverse and generalize allows us to solve one of the great challenges of computer science up to this point, which is perception. Sensing the real world, sensing raw data, whether it's visual or audio or otherwise. It could be vibration, it could be tremors, it could be temperature, it could be um, access to your data storage on, on your, in your corporate, uh, corporate storage. And all of a sudden, boom, by solving this problem, we just went on a massive race since 2012. One breakthrough after another was made possible because of it. Self-driving cars, the ability Baidu using computer vision translating it to text, Google self-tagging all the photographs that you upload. You no longer have to tell it where this picture was taken. It figures it out. You could, you could, you could ask it for all of your pictures of, of uh, beaches and it'll find it for you. For the very first time, a deep learning network that was trained by data, not, by, not coded by engineers, not coded by computer scientists, was FDA approved for medical imaging, cardiac medical imaging. And it just keeps on going. Recurrent neural nets came along. The ability for neurons, these networks, to learn time sequence information so that it can understand sequences of text that turns into words, sequence of words that turns into paragraphs. All of a sudden, we have speech recognition that are superhuman. We have the ability to now look at a video and caption it automatically. So this piece of software has learned what is in the video and what it means. Captioning. Another architecture came along called reinforcement learning, where the network is given a value system and it tries and tries and tries and tries again exhaustively until it figures out how to improve itself towards the value system. Reinforcement learning how we learned to just about do everything. As a result of that, one network called AlphaGo was able to beat the world's champion in Go called AlphaGo, and it was, a, it was a feat that nobody thought would be possible for another 20 years. Robots are learning how to translate computer vision sight to kinematics, hand-eye coordination, and it keeps on going. And now we have unsupervised learning. We have the ability to use autoencoders to enhance images, to fill in the, bro the, the missing spots. And then a breakthrough came along this last year, or start, I guess, I guess uh, Ian Goodfellow's paper was 2014, but this last couple of years, it's really taken off. Adversarial networks, training two networks at the same time. One network's job is to fool the second network, and the second network's job is to not be fooled. And so it's a little bit like one network learning how to be Picasso and generating images and paintings of Picasso, while the second network is learning how to discriminate whether it is truly Picasso or not. When you're done training this network, what you end up with is a network that is able to draw like Picasso, and you have another network that is able to recognize images and recognize paintings at a level of discrimination unheard of, generative adversarial networks. As a result, all of a sudden, all of these new ideas for generation comes along. We could use, uh, we create things like style transfers, generating voice, the ability to fill in empty spots or missing spots in photographs, natural language translation, to go from one language to another language, and to learn it, learn a pair of languages and then transfer that learning to other pairs of languages. So you learn how to translate from German to Spanish, and all of a sudden, how, all of a sudden you're able to learn how to understand from, translate from uh, English to, to, uh, to Spanish equally well. Zero-shot learning, transfer learning. These just spotlight a few of the examples. The number of papers in deep learning is just absolutely explosive. There's no way to keep up, and it's literally everywhere in the world. That big bang, that second, mo that second dynamic of computing, the big bang of deep learning has 
really laid the foundation of what we, we now all know is the coming era of artificial intelligence, where computers are now able to automate programs. Automation of automation. Computers that program computers, artificial intelligence.